but they're all there. So we'll send you this and then you fill in the blanks, then we'll send it to everybody. Okay. So that's why we want all your did we get your email address in the back and yours as well? We get your email address. I can perfect. Gianna will catch you. So yeah, before before you leave. Yeah, I can pass this around now actually. Um, we'll, we'll, I'm sorry, I'm oh, it's not a problem. <laughs> <Still learning. laughs> oh, don't be sorry at all. It's Saturday, I have a say. <laughs> so here is the Healthy Places Index. It's um, created by the um, Public Health Alliance of Southern California. Um, let's go into the map. It's that button there on that home page. Um, I'm just there we go. So it's just opening up. It takes a while. And here it is. And so we're going to zoom right in to, to him. And that's sort of a red blood. Such a beautiful name, red blood. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, red blood? If you're floating down the river 150 years ago, along the river, there are red colored soil. It was called La Bronca, Colorado. The banks of red, mm -hmm. and um, so that's where it got its name. That's that's so poetic. I mean, <laughs> you, you described it in a way an artist would. <laughs> You're a historian too, aren't you? Right? <laughs> yeah. So let's let's home in on red blood. This is so fascinating, especially for you as city manager, probably, isn't it? And this is probably no surprise to you, right? You're probably <laughs> seeing so. Parts of you have everything in red blood. Whoops, sorry, every time I go over to the side. So so you see these, you see these um, so that one green area is one census tract. Here is another one, here is another one, there is another one, there's another, there's another, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So tell me what you'd like me to look at. Possibly you're gonna want to look at a dark blue area, right? Because that gives you a clue as to how what you might create a project to run. Could you go south a little bit and just burn in the second or just get a little bit fun and have a very large Latino population? Oh, very good. Do you want me to click on this census here? This or track just here so that we can see the whole chunk. Oh, I see what you mean. Then go maybe zoom, zoom out, out a bit. Zoom just out a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Red Wolf and the Would this be it? Would this oh, be yeah, that oh, it? Oh, it's in Chester or half? half. It's half, half and half. So that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we got it. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, my God. We've got everything here. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah. In Nevada County, it's just like almost all pale blue, which is incredibly frustrating because it means that you can't be really creative. So you can burrow down into the <laughs> and you like really burrow down and get sort of really micro about it. And it doesn't seem like is this view over here? Yeah. Or is that you might have wondered what these areas here, these are called exclusion zones. The the bits that look like old fashioned pajamas. Yeah. Those are called exclusion zones. And that's usually because not enough people live there. It's under one pound. 1,500 people, and so therefore it's very difficult to draw conclusions from the data. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or it could be because there is like significant dormitory style residential living, perhaps as you know, like in Susanville, for example, or in, in, in um, Lassen County, there are a ton of prisons, so there's a large prison population, so they that's created an exclusion zone. Whether or not that's right or wrong <clears throat> is another, you know, why, why not include those four incarcerated people? You know, why not create a project? There are other state projects that are, are centered on incarcerated populations, and we ourselves have participated in them. But the, the, the Healthy Places Index uh, um, excludes those. So um, tell me where to go. Do you want to look at Corning just for fun? Yeah, and then we'll go to Red Bluff too, but I don't want to miss Red Bluff with you in the room. <laughs> so, um, so you see that as soon as you click on that census tract, it opens up and it tells you that only 18% of the whole of California is going to be as left, that, you know, as, as unhealthy as this particular tract. So that's a great basis for a project, right? <laughs> so you go down and you see what are the things that are coming up down? My goodness, one after another is in the dark blue area. These are the black lines here economic, education, social, transportation, neighborhood. 
um, healthcare access is not very clear. Yeah. That's a, a, an interesting, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you tell me what what here. Transportation is probably the lowest. Do you want to have a quick peek at that? Hey, Eliza, while you're scrolling, just keep going for your own. Go down and look at the racial um, yes. distribution. Yes. yes. You'll yes. Look and so the, exactly, so the comfort, the, the makeup of, of the racial demographics is interesting. And you can see that the, 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 the correlation is connected, you know, racial justice and health equity are tremendously connected. Um, and here, here you go, almost half the population is Latino. That's a fabulous project. What does it look like? How do we bring um, our Latino populations to the table and have them be part of a project that is also serving them. Um, and then don't forget that very small. In our in our grant guidelines, um, we will ask you, to, you know, try to be aware of your indigenous populations. It's so tiny, but there's an element of reparation that I know the state is going to appreciate. Um, let's let's make sure we don't forget them. Um, so um, going back up, do you want me to look at one of these? Should we look at transportation to see why it's so bad? Yeah. Okay, so it opens up, you know, that's basically access to only, um, you know, it's a, it's a terrible access to a car, basically. Mm -hmm. it means people can't ever go places, commute to a place where, with a better job, for example. Um, uh, and so let's look at, let's look at that. Yeah, and here you can see this is useful when you're writing your grant. Um, you can compare any of these to like how it is in this tract to how it is in the rest of the county. You know, 92% um, have better conditions within Tingham County than this particular tract does. For I, I would stop for a second. And when it comes to automobile access, I would wonder how the question is phrased in the census and however it did it, because I would suspect that it's not access to automobiles, it's driver's license. When you look at your population, most of the Hispanic population, many of them do not have driver's licenses, they do not drive. So it would not necessarily be access to a car, it's the ability to have a license and drive that car. I think that's brilliant. Katrina, this is exactly <laughs> why we do the listening tours. I, I work for with Head Start for eight years and we deal with a lot of the Hispanic population mm -hmm. and it is a huge, a huge and, issue. And why do you think that is? I mean, just to linger for a moment, why why isn't there the that the driving license? Um, they're, they're scared. They don't want to be on record. Yeah. They're they're very they're very scared and they keep yeah. to themselves. And so even to get appropriate dem demographics, I'm sure you can account for that as well. Um, when it comes to census and population, they're again they're hesitant and scared to be counted and come forth because they're not trusting of uh, we're the government, we're here to help. And how, <laughs> how, how, how the yeah. No, no. They are undocumented. Yes. Majority of them, or their friends and family, are so it's a big concern. And this is where it's so important for you, as a local community, to um, you might decide that you don't want to have a project around this because you don't want to increase fear. So I don't have the answers. Like, but it's, it's, it's a delicate. Yeah. But it, but this is the what's interesting here is that you can narrow down and it and it makes it clear. This is almost like a piece of your grant, you know, like everybody should have access to safe, accessible, and convenient transportation options to get to work and other destinations, especially if they do not own or have access to a car. Lack of access to a car should not limit people's access to opportunities. Getting around by foot, bike, and public transport also creates opportunities for physical activity, encourages social cohesion, and reduces contributions to climate change and air pollution. Wow, it's just mind-blowing. The numbers of ways this contributes to health. You know what I mean? So, um, one point I want to add is the public transportation limitations. Um, for all of Kenya and Kevin, what has happened oftentimes is the schools and other social agencies have built out transportation systems of their own. So, in order to get them to maybe a first orientation for cash aid, but they now pick them up at their home and bring them. The high schools have brand new fleets of vehicles to bring them to campus, not just buses, but for after school programs. So, in absence of a public 
transportation system, a lot of local entities have invested their own resources, sometimes public, sometimes not, to, to bridge the gap. So exactly. So again, only as a community will you know whether that's actually a real issue or maybe it's, it's, a, huge, it's a huge issue. Yeah. It's just that it's been patchworked to fix it. Right. Right. It's but there's a workaround happening. Mm -hmm. So you you might want to create a better workaround or 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 tackle the source issue. So do you want to have a quick look at um, the economic picture or education? Would you like to look at education? Yeah. Okay. And then I think we'll go to red block. We'll just have a look at, yeah, all three of those lines, um, you know, the degree of poverty, the degree of employment, and the degree of per capita income are all within the lowest quartile of the this particular, you know, thing that's being measured. And then um, that's a, a truly great case to support. Do you want me to look at, um, and let's look at employment for a second. Yeah. And, uh, and it tells you, it gives me all the clues on how to build a project here, just in terms of, you know, why it's important to look at employment. Um, research indicates that economic opportunity, especially having a job, is one of the most powerful predictors of good health and that impacts on health are especially pronounced for people in the near quality. So I'm going to go to Red Bluff. I'm sorry, I didn't hear if on that one, just in case, uh, just very consistent with what you were saying about people that are maybe licensed drivers and that being a factor, you'll see that very clearly in the social scores with voting and census. So the two things that are measured within the social policy action guide, uh, policy, policy action um, area, are the degree to which folks are participating in the census and the degree to which um, folks are actually getting to the voting polls. When I spoke with the executive director of um, Modoc County Arts Council in the far northeast, you know, as it nudges up against Oregon and then Nevada, uh, we looked at the very low social scores and she said, oh, that's because we need to create a project with artists where we make brilliant wheelchair ramps. We have a high level, you know, we have an aging population, lots of people in wheelchairs who can't get to vote. And let's create beautiful ones that will inspire that participation. And again, the, the connection with health is that each individual in society needs to have a voice, needs to feel that their vote matters and that they're not afraid to participate in, in the census and that, and that they have a, a sort of clear sense of autonomy in the direction of their lives. So there's a correlation with health there. It's Tom, isn't it? Tom, tell me which census you'd like me to, which track you'd like me to click on. It's still in the dark blue right there. This one? Mm -hmm. That's where the, uh, is that an airport right there? That is an airport. So then up, up pops the census track eight. Yeah. What are you saying, Tom? Look at these. I'll go down, I'll go down just so you see the angle. That's the whole lot. Is there any particular you want me to borrow into? Um, because within the transportation thing, pointing, I don't think so. How about the economic? Yeah, that's kind of almost down at the bottom, right? So here you go. What does this mean, Katrina? Which one are you on? You're on economic in um, oh. track seven. Is it track yeah. seven? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can see it on your screen. Can, can you see it on your screen? Yep. No, I have it. I have it. I wasn't certain because I heard Eliza say track eight. Yeah, track oh, seven. Oh. Track seven mm -hmm. is the one that we actually honed in before too, looking at, you know, because all three indices are dark blue with it, employment, you know, quite low. The employment, that employment number, basically the 4.6 percentile, we said that before, that means there's only 4.6 of tracks in California with lower conditions than this. Um, but the actual number of what it relates to, the amount of people age, uh, 25 to 64 that are working with a job, you know, recorded job, we understand there's other kind of jobs, is only 57%, 58% of people. Yeah, yeah. So do you, want, do you want me to look at that bit, is employment, or do you want to look at the 
I thought probably you were perfect to think of one, which would be most interesting for you to They all would be. So I'm going to be yeah. going back and looking at this later on, but this thing could be a little property. So here we go. And these are the these are the, the comparisons to the rest of the the um the rest of the city, the rest of the county, and the rest of the state. And then of course, you know, we don't need we hardly need to be told this. Every household should be able to afford the necessities of a healthy life, medical care, healthy food, quality housing, education, and other basics. Research indicates that economic opportunity is one of the most powerful predictors of good health and that impacts on health are especially pronounced for people in or near quality. I think what's really important in terms of this track seven is um, both the above poverty and the um, per capita income. They're both the lowest for the whole county overall too in this tract. Yeah. So huge, huge clues there as to potential art projects in in collaboration perhaps with social service agencies or with units of government you know maybe this maybe the new over time between now and when we open up um the grant portal for applications when we start actually formalizing you know like you can you can between now and six weeks from now you can you know develop a, a proposed application Maybe you'll have an art on them one day and say, yes, this particular um, unit of government, this particular department under, under the city can so collaborate you with artists, etc. So it's things. for the economic, you said, if there's people there, if there's a higher level of senior citizens, then that would be included in why it's a lower economics because they're not in the... I was giving you an example before when I mentioned an aging population. I was actually referring to Alturas in Modoc County. Um, and I loved the way the um, executive director of the Arts Council immediately saw a project mm -hmm. when we talked about the the, uh, the lack of participation in voting and census. And she said, that's because we need to make our voting places more accessible. They're just not accept accessible to our aging population, many of whom are in wheelchairs. And it was just a sweet, a sweet in indicator of how I wouldn't have thought of that, but you local communities would. It may not be the same. I don't know what your your well, age is. I was wondering if that some... particular area, I know that there's multiple senior homes oh, and a lot of senior there. housing in that area, and that's why I was asking. And, that, and a lot of low cost housing. So, there you so go. that's why I was asking so that specific question. Yeah, that's brilliant to see. That's fabulous local knowledge. To add to that, Measure of America has kind of really great job of measuring specific demographics for various things. But one area where we stand out, similar to this, we're at the lowest, is 25% of our 18 to 26 year olds aren't in school or work, so they're considered disconnected. So that's close to double, sometimes triple, other rural work areas. So, yeah. And working age. Um, for the young, so young adults. This is so great. Maybe when we send this presentation back to Chrissy, um, make sure, just one more thing, Karen, Karen um, maybe let Karen have a look to, to make sure that we've listed all those certain key things that you know that, that aren't on there. Yeah, that would be great. Anything else you'd like me to look at with this? Someone has their hand up. And I just want to ask um, if you guys can speak up when you talk because Katrina can't hear us. She can hear Eliza. So right. thank you. Exactly. And we're also recording you. And it's essential that we hear because um, we those really critical points that you're sharing. I want to be able to hear them later, you know, and, and, and make sure that they're we use them in the in the little video that you can find. Sure. Okay. Um, is this index, is this census data available in this format from earlier census? What I'm getting at is I'm aware that our community has been generationally poor. Um and so the 18 to 20 whatever that aren't in school, I mean it's their reaction to the if this is something we've seen before. It's generational. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to compare. Yeah. 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 That's a really great 
question back to the um, Public Health Alliance, isn't it, Katrina? Um, whether there is also a map that relates to a census beyond, you know, before 2020. Mm -hmm. That's a, a great thought. Um, yeah, I would doubt that there is simply because it's a new tool and they're probably, they're just really catching up um, right now, probably on even keeping things up to date, you know, as they go. But I think it is, I think that's where those kind of comparisons over time are really useful too. I think it's a great point. I don't know if it's in their purview though, unfortunately, especially if they're getting contracts in Utah and stuff. <laughs> Before we move on to, um, to another tract, um, and I think we, we there's, there's, a, there's a big tract over here, tract one that I don't want to forget. There must be something going on there that it's dark blue, and there's another one here. So when you're thinking about making applications from Tehama, um, think about the relationships between these dark blue tracks as well and, and what can be done because perhaps perhaps together doing something <laughs> could bring all of them up. I don't know. You you would know. You'll find correlations. Um, I'm going to show you some, some really cool trick and let me see if I get this right. Um, right now I'm in neighborhood, Katrina. I'm in neighbor, I've clicked on neighborhood. And if I, and this is in track seven alone, but if I click on track six, it will tell us what the what the same neighborhood conditions are in another track. Well so done, that, well done. Yeah. I got it right first time, I'm so excited. Okay, so now we've gone from, from track seven, which shows that there's, you know, pretty low, Help that relates to park access in track seven. The same in track six. These are all dark blue areas. The same worse in track one. And then in track eight, it's the same. Can I, I, I just. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, but, but you might be seeing the same things with other. You can click on any one of these things. Like, uh, let's. Click on education for a moment. We're in. So now we're in. Um, now we're in education. So high school enrollment and preschool enrollment don't look so bad in track seven, but the degree to which folks have access to a higher education, bachelor's or above, does. Why does this matter? Everyone should have the opportunity to seek higher education and to go to college if they choose. The college they don't have access to it, or that they just have cheap. It's not happening. Why it's is not it happening? happening? It's exactly. not happening. Right. Exactly. I'm not the person to tell you why, but you might have information about why. A college education is essential for many higher paying careers, and it also helps people develop the cognitive skills and knowledge necessary to make healthy choices. A college education can also build important social and physiological skills. And if we go from those again, let's do that funny experiment where we're looking at we're looking at education in one tract, and we'll click on another tract and see what it looks like. It's the same over there with the bachelor's thing, and here it's oddly not. It's not so much, but preschool enrollment is really low in tract one. How can we help? folks have access to preschool education in track number one. And then here it's back down by high school. There's a project there. How do we help folks get connected to high school enrollment? And again, so, I'm just going to keep the challenge because of all the great feedback we've gotten so far too. Um, or how do we also track other forms of education in these really rural areas where it's hard to get a kid to... Uh, you know, a center with everyone else. So what are the other tools? Could it be some other kind of books for rural communities that help with preschool development that involve, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just recognizing that a lot of this is not steered towards rural life. Right, exactly. We've heard this time and time again, each community that we go to. So you don't have to take this as red, you can challenge it and challenge it in your grant applications. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge what the Healthy Places Index shows us but we'd also like to tell you how our project is also, mm -hmm. you know, helping. Is it through literary? Is it through digital arts? Is it visual arts? What is it? 
What was that? I'm so sorry. If you could speak up so we can yeah. go back to the 19% of uh, access to the vegetables. So, yes, we were in track 10, and then so that was 10.6% in track 7. Yeah, I've seen the previous loop was 19, and then track 9. It's not. What's the Yes, this was one. it this one here? Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, I looked at the Department of Education of California data. Uh, proficiency shown by the graduates of Red Block High in mathematics was 18%. In Golden High was 17%. And in English, 43 and 44 respondents. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting? 19% uh, um, access to the bachelor's degree and 18% proficiency, which means uh, um, grade C and higher for the graduates of the school. It means that in high school, children still learning introduction to integrated basis of mathematics. Mm -hmm. And never, never touch the subject of the mathematics and geometry, algebra, etc. They don't go beyond that basic introduction. Yes, yes. And why right, it's happening? Because admission to enrollment to high school is based on age, not on uh, knowledge level. Yes, interesting. Interesting. And it's allowed to a person. At the age of 18, be a high school student yeah. without knowing multiplication table. Yeah, my word. So you can see you clearly would be a marvelous, but are you an artist as well? Yes, I'm an yeah. artist and a mathematician. So <laughs> you are hereby challenged now with all these witnesses to start creating credit and education and start finding partners. Yeah, brilliant. Well, that's the end of the live presentation, but you now have this tool. And um, so what are the factors that we're gonna, and we're gonna just turn it back to you in a second, just, just so you know, this is what we're considering. Like when we determine how much of county or a region should be apportioned, I mentioned that if we just to divide up the 3.4 million that we have to give to artists and to organizations supporting the artists, um, it would be like 170 or 180. But we feel that there are other things, such as the county density of blue area tracks. It's looking good at Tehama. County population, county geographic size, mm -hmm. county tribal and ethnic considerations composition. Overall proposal strength is going to be critical. Likely longevity, sustainability of projects beyond the pilot programs grant activity period. Why is this interesting? As I mentioned, I don't, I don't think I did mention, this is the first statewide pilot of its kind that's looking at the relative health of communities across the state and marrying that with an, um, our, our creative sector's capacity to um, work with social sector and other sectors and units of government, et cetera, to tackle some of these issues that are critical in the same way that the WPA did in the 1930s and 40s. We want your projects to look good and be sustainable. We want to be able to create case studies from some of the proposals, some of the, you know, we want you to do so well that we can borrow what you've done well here. And it, you know, someone, some other community um, is going to be able to use it across the country or across the state. It's going to be so exciting. Mm -hmm. So think, when you're thinking of your proposal, think how sustainable it's going to be and how usable as a case study. Is it going to become gold standard? So I'm going to <laughs> make it gold standard if you can. Um, and then, um, um, yes, exactly, cross country cross county collaboration and mentoring, um, you know, will will you be able to um is there does that dark blue in Tehama go beyond Tehama 
other opportunities for collaboration across the country lines or regionally. Um, and then, um, of course, this recognizes, like you pointed out, that there may be community conditions that are not captured in the 2020 census. An example of this would be where a major fire has happened since 2020. And it's not captured here. Mm -hmm. You tell us, and you challenge us in your in your proposals. And then we're asking ourselves, you know, what kind of grants should we be offering? Do you like small grants? You know, do you like artist residence, artist, artist residencies where one artist is working with one agency um, to do something really fabulous um, over a specific period of time versus a, a huge project involving multiple artists, multiple agencies, and more money. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, what's your definition of a micro grant? What could you what could you do for how much? Um, so we're thinking of all those things. And at this stage I'd like to turn it over to you. Mm -hmm. We have we started at four, didn't we? Did we start at four? I did. Oh, yeah. 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 So we have about like 25 more minutes, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Because someone has to get to the bingo. And she oh, yeah. <laughs> said, I know. It's a Exactly. And this girl is important because she's recording all of you. So we, we now want to stop talking. And we want you to tell us who's missing that should be here. Who do we need to bring in next time you all meet? who needs to be in the room because we're going to challenge um, to Hamer County Arts Council to bring you together for more sessions, like whether it's, um, you know, um, by yourselves in a room like this or, you know, on Zoom and then bringing more people from more parts of the county or whether, they, whether you want to gather all the musicians together or all the visual artists together or all the writers together or all your digital artists together. Um, what's it going to look like? Um, but right now, let's let's talk about projects, um, mix it up, um, talk about potential collaborations. But I think we're, do you want to divide into two? Do you want us to remain like this and just have a conversation? I kind of like staying together as a group sure. so we can all hear what's going on. Nice. And um, I don't know that we need to list everybody that's not here, but we are missing a large number of people involved in health in power taking the domestic violence, um, social service organizations, Rotary Commons, Sir Optimus, Delta Kappa Gamma, et cetera, et cetera, that we were hoping would be here. And um and then uh, I representatives of our more diverse populations. Yes, if you look around, yes. there's, a white, there's a lot of white in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. We're definitely missing that representation. Yeah, especially in that things. one track that has the yeah. population. Yeah, well. and I have several um, connections mm -hmm. that I'm hoping to further connect with to bring them. <laughs> with, that, with that track, I can't remember the number of it, but what might be great is if you invite us back to do a virtual session and you focus in on that population and get everyone on a Zoom call or something and we can kind of have a conversation and you, can, that you yeah. can tell us how we should you know show up to that be great with with some you know both community members and maybe some social service organizations <coughs> again mixing up mm -hmm. I can believe somebody from TCB yeah, well, yep. I actually am starting there on Monday. <laughs> so, <laughs> what role are you taking? Um, I'll be doing. Uh, they really want to be called the CPIN um, California Preschool Instructional Network. I'll be doing staff development and trainings for preschool age. And so, when we do that, I'm really excited by that. Let's do it in Spanish. With it. Let's let's um let's get a. Has, do you have someone that we can pay yeah. to interpret? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can find yeah. somebody. So let's let's do that. We'll we'll do a sort of bilingual thing. I love that idea. And we'll also give you one of these mm -hmm. presentations, <laughs> which is in Spanish. We're going to be doing it for all the counties. Awesome. So let's go. So what are, are you thinking? Like, throw some projects out there. 
as a small work group, just just a reminder to speak up. As so a small um, between work group, group, we did some sense. preparation in advance for the meeting that represented Ooh. a pretty good swath of the room. Um, so if if appropriate, um, we're going to have the arts council start the presentation, and it's just some slides to provide background on some things that are in place in history of the arts and then projects that are right now happening and then some proposals that we thought might fit um and it doesn't represent everybody so we'll go very fast but oh, yeah. you can do this one. i would say it lasts for 10 minutes if it can go less than 10 minutes that would be great because okay. then everyone can make some probably add. other ideas yeah. yeah so i challenge you to go for it so we'll go for that we just, <laughs> i can just <laughs> present that Either that HDMI, yes, 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 and then it would present it, for this room. Will it? Do you have an yep. HDMI? I do. Fantastic. Yes, right. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, good thank, well. thank you for coming. Good job. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> you want me to get the screen then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The computer's going. <laughs> good, good catch, Philip. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, great <laughs> catch, Philip. Well, I want to watch this. I'm going to stand. So, um, how about the person in the How about oh, someone yeah. presenting the stand? Or are you all for that? Well, we're just going yeah, right. right. to so. capture that on the video to get our minds sitting. I can only get either the screen. So, open yeah. the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. but I can do your hands and just sit there. Yeah, or yeah. stands. Why don't you just stand? Okay. But I mean, even with them standing, it's I need to bring my light. I down. think you should go with the screen because yeah, okay. oh, we can see. stand wherever the mic is. So help. Okay, then stay to help with that. Okay. 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 Yeah, great. To Haven County Arts Council, as many of you know, that we're the local SLP. Yeah. for the California Arts Council. And we have a rich history in Tama County of art and art endeavors. Um, some of the, and it's exciting to see what the future is gonna be. We've had a great momentum in the last few years of public art and art programs starting in this county. And we really wanna keep that momentum going. And we really wanna to work together with the different art communities instead of everybody doing separately one thing or another, we have more power together and working together. And some of these, <clears throat> some of these uh, communities, of course, is the Art Council, Tame Creatives, the Job Training Center, of course, the city and the county. Um, listing down uh, State Theater, which the State Theater has been here since 1946, I think it is. And the um, State Theater for the Arts has been a big part of this community. Uh, which is a nonprofit. Rebel Art Association is a group that's been here for over 60 years, like 60 over 65, right, Julia? 1955. 1955, they were founded. So we have these communities, and, and we'll go on, you see the list of, uh, of other people that are part of this community. I said Rebel, that's the Hidden County Program. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, I'd like to challenge the idea that we have this on. You don't so much need to capture this. I'd much rather capture you speaking because oh, okay. I can be sent the presentation later. Oh, we can all see okay. this now. Does and that makes sense. As in part two, we kind of call this the Tehama County Corrective Creative <laughs> Collective. <laughs> the Creative <laughs> Collective. We're going to fix that. Um, that can be a, a changing or working, but uh, a title, but we think that kind of encompasses it all, and we can all work together. There's a lot more that are out there, we just don't know. Yeah, and there are more that aren't even listed. So, yeah. It was kind of fun because in preparation for guests, it was like, how do we talk about who we are? And we realized there's so many more people that are not on this, and we didn't get to come together quickly to do this. but. It felt like mainly you're able to be all inclusive. Is yeah. everybody actually works collaboratively in Tehama County, and it's so unique for Tehama County because we aren't territorial, and we really do want you know the same thing together. Yeah. And so everybody's being competitive. Everybody's exactly. the end goal. Yes. Yeah. The big yeah. picture. Yeah. Yes. 
So um, we did look into your health places, health places index, and uh, noticed the three worst areas for Tillamook the County being neighborhood transportation and economic. And the heart is because even though our county is the worst performer <laughs> in the state, we love being here and we choose to live here. And um, from an outsider, sometimes when people look at them, they're like, why would you live there? Or why would you work there? Or, um, but when you do ask people, they have a very specific reason. They love living here. Um, we began to map out some of the assets, and we know that they're so limited compared to what else is there. Um, and then we kind of aligned them with the three highest um, need areas, so neighborhood and active community or community, and then economic. And on the left, um, we have our chief administrative officer who's in high support of the arts and this program and all of the history and momentum. Yeah. He actually, he actually came to us and said, what can we do as a county to support your art mm -hmm. Like he sought us out and wanted to know how he could help. And he was going to be here today, but he couldn't make it. But he's an extreme supporter of the arts. Tama um, <clears throat> County Arts Council was established in 1982. Uh, we have some great events that we put on every year. Our art walk just we just named it. Uh, Missoula Children's Theater. Every spring, we include all. We send out information to all uh, kids in the county uh, through their schools and and invite them to participate. It's an amazing program where the week they do a, a full on uh, theatrical production. Uh, community gallery that we've had and will still be having. Uh, we give out community grants every year through the money that we get with the CAC. Uh, Tame County Children's Art Contest, which is no, I know is something that we can expand on, and Poetry Out Loud is something else that we offer every year. All of these can be expanded upon. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Timid Creatives is a kind of a grassroots art group that started about three and a half years ago. Philip and I and five other people just kind of got together. We started a Facebook group, we started sharing our art, and then we started something called the Drink and Draw. And we know when we gather, we start to bring something in ideas. Mm -hmm. There was a conversation around the lack of public art in our town. And this is just three and a half, four years ago. Um, and we kind of said, you know, instead of um, bitching, let's do something about it. And this is right when COVID started. So everyone was kind of off, depression kicked in, all the things, and we just started painting. We just started painting. There's an alley that's, I don't know if you went down there, had the opportunity yet or not, but it's just around the corner. Um, my husband and I own one building. So I was like, we own a whole block of the building. Let's just start painting. It had graffiti on it that um, we painted out every three months. We painted murals on there three years ago. It hasn't been touched in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So we instantly knew we had something that was beautiful and it was also functional for the city and beautification. So we started painting. And it just spiraled from there. And so three and a half, four years later, we have over probably 25, 30 murals, wouldn't you say, in our town? And it's created a, a really big, awesome art movement. We now have Bold, which is a year, every year project we're going to do. The first year happened to be a mural project. This year was Bold uh, Music and Arts Festival. So continuing to build on those art events each year. Um, and then we started and are in the process of still, we have the Wild Art Horses. Um, these are large life-size fiberglass horses that we purchased through, and, through yeah, you've seen them in the window, <laughs> through um, sponsorships and self-funding um, from the group. Uh, what we are trying to do is tie on our history in Rev Bluff because people are very connected to our history here. And we used to have uh, wild horses that they let run down Main Street because we didn't want this horses got injured. But we're connecting the art to that history. <laughs> And what we didn't know, but sort of knew at the time is how much everybody was gonna love that. People would love the history in town. And when you tell the story through art, we love it even more. Mm -hmm. And so it's, again, solving the problem of space. And there's a great example of a before and after. And this is the one on the left is only four years ago. And what it looks like now is beautiful. We also are very um, conscious about what we choose to paint. Um, we like it to tie into our history, our mm -hmm. cultural. Obviously we have a lot of Hispanic in our, in our community. So we've painted a lot of um, Hispanic uh, themed murals. Um, a lot of them have to do with our nature and our resources here, our water, our, our um, 
nature or uh, animals recreation. Um, so we also get small grants through the uh, arts council, and we put them in the school for white art kits to put to give to the schools for the kids. Um, and we are continuing to come up with projects and figure out how to beautify spaces in town, which end up with people gathering the, again, I'm going to use the alley as an example. Nobody would ever walk down that alley. People constantly walk down the alley now with strollers, the kids run down it, they take pictures in front of it. And now we have two art alleys and now it's happening all over the town. We really want to work on an art uh, map because we have miles of arts and we can walk all around town. So getting a map location where we can get everybody to walk and see where they're going and see where the artists are. Um, so that's an ongoing group that, again, that Philip and I run with five other people. Um, and we've been very successful so far with that. And then, okay, art side is where the old art council used to be. It's a couple buildings over. Um, one of our entertainment creatives actually purchased this building. It is going to be a gallery event in art school. Um, so upstairs will be another gallery and an event center. Down below, we're turning into a, um, an art school, art classes, um, where we're going to take kids from all over the county, um, high school and adults, teach them whatever kind of you know art we can get teachers for. Mm -hmm. So we're also providing a space for artists to be hired as teachers to share their talent with the rest of the community, whether it's macrame or you're you know a master at painting and there's a full art uh, pottery studio down below which was formerly the arts council as well that they ran um we're tailing um off of the success that they had with that studio down there so this is going to be a really good keystone uh in partnership for you know with the arts council just so close bobbing back and forth you know with the platform and stuff so um this is going to be a real keystone of our art in, in town so um, as we saw that the grant was a workforce development grant, we thought it'd be helpful to lay a little bit of history and groundwork around workforce development that has happened and then some plans that are in the works. Um, so we have a huge Latino population. We did a video uh, series two years ago. It was for launching Latino youth, so helping them to if they see if they can believe it. Okay. Um, but really the history of Job Training Center has been around supporting under-resourced populations. Um, and Latinx is one of our primary focuses. So the second is um, in 2015, we began a makerspace, a paid makerspace, where people who are on welfare are learning skills around both soft skills and hard skills, and they paint and make home goods and then sell them every twice a month. And it's been wildly successful. It's been showcased throughout the state as a model of how to use art as a form of therapy, but also as a form of workforce development. Um, and then most recently, since 2020, we've had a grant to help with uh, restorative justice for um, ages 14 to 30 years old. And it's been absolutely incredible. So if anybody who has justice involvement and how do we get them into jobs or school counseling? And it's a wraparound program with Empowered Women and a couple other agencies. Most recently, we were awarded $1.3 million to create a maker space in this space. Um, at the actual room. Yeah, in this room. This room. <laughs> and the gallery um, is a piece of it. So it's, we're going to take the exact same model that is Washington Street Productions and apply it to more visual technology arts. So it'll be like a clean maker space. So printing labs, are, our dream is to become like the maker lab at the college. Um, Dan Donnelly has uh, inspired us beyond belief. <laughs> and we came off of that tour just saying in 10 years, and we said, nope, in three. So um, if we can make it happen, we would love to. So they they will actually be able to work and get paid in this maker space, but then they'll also be able to work and get paid in the art gallery. And then sell their goods as well. So we're just thinking about you know how we can pay them. We had some ideas and as a group, um, and really just wanted to tie them back to the Healthy Places Index and how can we create safe, beautiful walking paths so that when you do go to the park, um, you do feel safe, <laughs> and that you would want to have um, you know maybe murals or light or wayfinding or art boxes. Um, interactive, open-ended art activities for adults and children, um, both permanent and temporary installations. 
And then around the economics, there's a lot of artists in the area that need upskilling. Um, so what, how do you actually take your skill and turn it into um, a business model? And how do you make money doing that? And how do you get the technical skills and um, the community forward? And then the youth talent pipeline, which we talked a lot about already. Um, the arts council specifically um, applied for a VR grant not long ago. Unfortunately, they didn't get it. But um, in, in just inspiring young adults, sometimes it's hard to get to things in a rural area. So um, how can you bring them to the MoMA from downtown Red Rock? Um, and then kind of a big dream that the group collectively put together is could we have a permanent business consultant? Who actually works with nonprofits and government and small businesses to um, take their idea all the way to execution? So that could be from this flash pad that just got approved for downtown. There aren't any art installations today in it. So, how could we have somebody help them, you know, do that? Or is it a small restaurant who, you know, if they had a more inviting open area space, it's beautiful and inviting. And, it would increase their revenue and they would increase jobs in the existing restaurant that they have. Um, but they don't necessarily have the technical expertise to make it beautiful and make it artistic. Um, and it you know, kind of beats loneliness because in an area like this, there's, there's a lot of loneliness that leads to mental health and, and things like that. So those were just a very small number of ideas that this group came up with, but you know, we're probably more excited to hear ideas that other people had. Um, or have, or you know, anything else that we need to have. You're just amazing. That's <laughs> you're just amazing. Honestly, I, I, um, Chrissy mentioned that there was this very general group, a very innovative group that was going to present, and I, and I, I wasn't sure what to expect. It was just it's so thoughtful. All these things. I love the way you've already married what you found in the Healthy Places Index with possible solutions to them. You know, I just keep thinking like this and people engaging more artists. Remember the money is supposed to go, artists must be paid. This work wasn't done for artists. And um, the intergenerational piece is absolutely essential. I love these ideas. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. How do you feel? Listening to some of these. Thank you. Yes, I'm ready to let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> One point that I would like to mention too is with the, um, as far as mental health is concerned, when we started painting these murals, I can't tell you how many people talk to me, and I'm sure oh, you guys too, that you, they you all these artists over and over and over again to like, I'm in my house, I'm depressed, I don't get outside, but they can safely get in their car and drive down the alley. And like, they're like, you saved, you saved us yeah. from, you know, serious depression and we could build these really things in a safe space so it was really a, a solution we didn't know we were right. creating to a really big mental health problem at that time you know from depression and all the things i kind of want to add um add to it but also challenge the whole group since i have every, everybody here i don't see disability at all on on this there's touches of it because of the elderly and the thing that I would like to voice as part of this community is that disability will touch everyone, mm -hmm. no matter age, race, background. Mm -hmm. There is no discrimination, mm -hmm. yet it is not common mm -hmm. or acknowledged, and it affects how people do things. Mm -hmm. Specifically, like I love being a part of the art community, but I hesitate sometimes because I'm not sure it's going to be an excessive something. Whether like I love the murals, and I know now that I'm comfortable in the community, I'm going to participate more. But I have friends, you know, that live in more urban areas that they don't have the access to community. So we have to figure out how to create a conversation of education and being able to share this without being like, okay, I don't know if it is going to be acceptable. So I do love living because people have been amazing, but. I just want to say there needs to be a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think that's very good point. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. But it does need to be something that we promote that is accessible to all abilities. Yeah. And I think it would be, I think this would be that it has been so far, 
such an amazing community, honestly. Like, you know, I'm from the area, kind of like on the periphery, you know, I'm from Plymouth County, but I also live in the area. But I love it here. And everyone has been amazing here because I think this is a really great place that we can show other areas that. You know what? We might be little, but we can do something better. Yeah. And on that point, when you say we can do something better, we have an amazing group of people here and that are missing mm -hmm. that everybody works so collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And there's no like, oh, we want this way. Mm -hmm. Everybody just blends together. And half of us are on all the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we understand the the importance of unity with this because we all have the end goal. And sometimes if somebody comes to us and I'm like, that's not what we need to go here, or they'll say, you know what, call them. And we're really good about spinning all this stuff around to get the best results. We work together in a really, really amazing way. I can see. And then, so maybe, maybe a missing link might be to have an accessibility consultant for the arts. You'd be a great that's person for that. <laughs> You're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. And that's yeah. all the things that we, you know, oh, don't think job. about right off the bat. I know. That's why. And, yeah. and we'll take it and run, you know, and do all the things that we can to, to build on that. Love it. Just, I, I mean, I, I have an idea. I don't, I'd like to run it by you. Like, what if we did build out like a diversity, equity, and inclusion group as a part of this collective that really was a, a platform for voices of every every level because diversity, like you said, it's 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 all of us. You know, it isn't always a visible diversity. Exactly. Um yeah. it's so many other things. And and we all know when we have diverse voices at the table, we have better solutions. Um, so even on these brainstorms, like you know, we invited Latino outreach, for instance, I think mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah, and they're like, okay. And they're so excited and they're so busy. And um, but you know, but, but we we don't have anybody representing Latino outreach in the room today. And so, you know, just thinking about not just those large populations that are kind of um, in our face on the census map, <laughs> but the other ones too that we're just not aware of. Or, I mean, I don't know if, you, if that addresses kind of what you're talking about to make sure you have. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it forward because I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah. I know that yeah. you can be a great voice for it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I am so glad that you came. <laughs> I held her high water. Like, my wheelchair got stuck in the car. Honestly, when we were out here, but I made it. I love it. It's fantastic. I'm so touched by you guys. Seriously, you are ahead of the curve. <laughs> I wanted to say one of the my favorite things about this community that I see it is the crossover. It is the fact that it's not just one exclusive. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're this group. You can't yeah. be a part of it. There is collaboration. And that is how I feel about where we live. Because again, where I, I'm from, from East County, but I'm from the Bay Area. You know, my grand and three grandparents are from Horny. Mm -hmm. So I feel rooted here, but I also want to expand that and show like that this really is something to be said. And there is not. Yeah. I, I think that's what's made us so much successful at this point. I had a gal from uh Anderson, the city of Anderson, she called me and asked, how are we all doing what we're doing? And I'd love to make such a distraction of all the art and the arts council and everybody. And I said, you know, the people, it's the champions that we found and it's the way we work together. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's made the most movement. You have the right connections and the yeah. right temperaments. Mm -hmm. You go get it done. Yeah. And we've all seen been, the big picture. Yeah. And we've been extremely fortunate in that sense. And we know there's lots more out there, so we're trying to pull them out of the woodwork. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, a new, I'm a newcomer, like, because they moved in and all of a sudden I'm part of the art. So now we're literally roommates, like, we share refrigerators <laughs> <laughs> and utilities. That is creative, you know, we have to yeah. <laughs> But you have talent, so that's But with too. that, you know, it's like, um, it has been such a welcoming group, and I know so few of you guys because I'm so new to this kind of art area and 
Um, but it, it has been so welcoming and it has kind of blown me away. Like every person I've met, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a group, a group you would want to work with. Thank you so much, you guys. You've just been so inspiring. I want to make sure that um, mm -hmm. those who might not have spoken yet um, get a chance to. You have your hand up as well. Um, yes. So I am not an artist, so I'm a huge fan. <laughs> um, I'm Bryn. I went to the research conservation district here in Kingdom County. Um, also, the nonprofit system the conservation department. And we see, and we all recognize that art is a fantastic inclusive And we foresee a great opportunity to work with art artists to help tell the story and then to talk to many people with mm -hmm. our natural world mm -hmm. through art. Um, a lot of artists use the natural world as their medium, right? As their inspiration, inspiration of work. And we basically live in an amazing place for that specific um, and to be able to use art as that medium and that possible point for the general public to get a better understanding of what's actually happening in our natural world on our landscapes here in Kingdom County, um, we could really help create um, more stewardship on all of our citizen things. Um, there's quite a few project concepts that I shared with some of you in this room in the chat, um, but I I'd like to make sure that it's at least known, um, maybe for this grant or something in the future. Um, keep in mind that we are, um, the RCD is a public organization through the government. And then we have our nonprofit branch, I will see. So we have a couple of people that we could collaborate with artists. Um, one concept is articulates. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be capitalizing on the fact that artists are fantastic observation. First and second, um, just exquisite at looking at whatever your, your subject is uh, capturing. And pairing that with uh, natural resource professional uh, geologists that is who is also an excellent observer. So marrying the two um, and having that exchange with the natural world could really um, help with artwork and could actually help us land managers and those that help manage our natural world um, tell that story mm -hmm. of what it is and ultimately hopefully increase that natural world understanding, right? So environmental aspects, um, and really important. Thank you. That's so great. So now mm -hmm. I, I thoroughly encourage you to go off and find artists who will work with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw at the beginning that the state is very interested in what artists have to say about issues that are critical to society, society as they connect with fire, water, mm -hmm. um, natural resources and we know it's pretty so go out and find some artists to work with well, right now you've done it a few times right you've had an artist out to the car mm -hmm. not quite i thought you already did it yeah she's been having some great programs yeah i found it i don't know see if we have time to show them forest and fire but they could go online and see um forestandfire.org so yes just an example of a project that connects um artists with the environment uh, we have in the northern central sierra nevada um, where our uh, eastern and western slope nevada county um we just finished a four-year project called forest fire which mapped the thirteen thousand year history of forests and their management from indigenous peoples in our case the busho tribes through to european settlement when the forests were sort of you know, clear cut and went underground to support mines and housing for miners, et cetera, et cetera, um, to when they grew back and how they looked different and how they suffered in health as a result of that and how they grew to become agents for catastrophic fire. 
but what can be done about it and what is the positive solution to it. So we we we, we created um, an exhibition um, working with 19 California artists. That's an example of a regional project that spans several counties um, and saw us working with universities, the University of Berkeley, um, UC uh, Berkeley, um, Sageman Creek Field Station. I don't know if you have any field stations here, any connections with universities doing incredible work with um, you know, natural resources. Um, we also collaborated with Cal Fire, um, fire departments, housing associations, everything. So it's a, it's a kind it's, a, it's an example of a, a beautiful project that connects natural resources and the urgency of some issues. That's just I had to include Katrina put this picture and isn't it beautiful? It is it's in Tahema. It's so beautiful. Couple of folks I haven't heard from over here. Do any of you have thoughts or questions or anything that you'd like to no, no I'm new to all this kind of stuff. So you're I'm, uh, breathing it all in. It all in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you have any thoughts you'd like to share or questions? No, I guess, yes. I guess so. I'm a working artist. I consider myself to be spiritually trying to give back uh, by creating art that reaches into the heart of people. I've given some talks when you've been to my talks. In this, uh, in Red Love, as well as Red about um, the create, what creates creativity in art. And why, you know, why do they wake up in the morning and decide, oh, I think I'll create art. I mean, to speak deeper than that, it's based on my talk about artists that have existed through time and from the cavemen where they did cave paintings all the way through to current, but especially impressionists and their creations. And you know, what motivated them? Why did they continue to, uh, to do this, to evolve? Creativity, mm -hmm. with the creativity, and I like that to give that kind of talk to people to share those kind of ideas that this this didn't just evolve; it's it's in our makeup. Right. It's part of what all of us are, and that instinctive creativity influenced by the divine that uh, you know would help younger people especially to um, address that and, and create this positivity in a world that seems to be really not negative mm -hmm. uh, so uh, just by speaking by creating by sharing my art mm -hmm. and my ideas sometimes i receive visions uh, recently received one about ukraine and I, I shared that in the gallery and with a postcard about a vision and how you can connect to that intuitive power that we all have. But so many of us have decided to turn the off switch. And so I'm trying to share that. I hope to share that with especially younger people who are creating and people, and like my father, he said to me, did you make any money at it? That's one of the <laughs> and, I, and it's been a recurring thing. Did you make any oh. money at it? Well, at 77, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love what you were talking about. I love the way you're thinking. It sounds like the most marvelous talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You haven't spoken to you. Okay. No, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> you said the um, that's kind of yeah. Sorry, that's kind of my background. Actually, I did a lot of a lot of art from young. So high school and young, my entire before I got around with water wall, and the right painting and that kind of stuff. Um, but my immediate family was like, "Well, what are you going to make? What are you going to make any money with it?" Yeah. So I was quickly turned off from the art world, unfortunately. Um, 
years, years, and years now later, I, I went to San Jose State and got my degree in product design. So now I'm a product engineer. So I do a lot of different things on the computer, sketching ideas, printing, testing, going back and forth. So I like being able to see more young people coming into the art world and figuring out what their niche is, you know, because mm -hmm. it could be just about anything. Like, you're going to put effort into it, make it beautiful. Before we say the word, we're going to gather you for a group photo. You like this one more. <laughs> we feel so guilty. We're going to have to go all the way back to Murdoch. It's the only place where we've got to go a group oh, yeah. photo. And I literally am mm. tossing and turning in life with guilt. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to go back there. So we're not going to let you escape from this room. Not a single person without a group picture. Anyone else who has this person? Well, I think you should. Yeah, I mean, I can talk a little bit about my experience here in Tehama County. I'm a relatively new artist here. Um, I mean, I'm born and raised here, live, grew up here, um, love the community. I'm community oriented. I love community, volunteer a lot in different organizations. And um, about four years ago, I got an art kit for Christmas. And um, I haven't been able to stop painting. So just never had that experience or that opportunity to um, to try art. And so when I found I liked to do it, I combined it with Tehima Creatives, a local art club here, and I haven't been able to stop. So um, <laughs> it's a real problem. Um, I worked myself into a full-time art career. So um, before I was a full-time artist, I had a career in healthcare. I went to Chris A for a health science degree and I served in health care for seven years. Um, and my my all my volunteer work it just kind of grew and grew into a full-time um, job. Um, but my my point is that there's um, so much opportunity here for you to learn art, to develop those skills and to learn from each other. And one of the great things that I really appreciate from you know, creators and the local art people is that I get to learn from them. You can learn different techniques and styles um, and get to advocate advocate through art, public art, um, install many uh, murals in our community. Um, we installed one um, for advocating for LGBTQ, the Armstrongs, the massive mural, and it's mm -hmm. blowing a rainbow on the front of it. And we've done domestic violence murals, um, murals celebrating hospital volunteers, um, anyways, the point is that um, I'm super excited. We are running that tourist program at the high school, and he is taking the lead on bringing art to the kids that have severe trauma. And he's doing a beautiful job bringing all kinds of things in, and we continue to say connection through creativity. And these kids with different humans, different worlds. When you bring in this art, they're able to express themselves in ways that words will never be. Able to no. So being having access to these kids at the high school and these kids that are in the in ride, it's called ride, it's called the Yes. So it's been a beautiful video, but it, it, it crosses all the divides yeah. of trauma, inclusivity, all abilities. Yeah. You know, whatever the level of ability or not there is, it art definitely brings it all yeah. together. And the, the kids that are coming into that squad, we're going to eat 25 to 30 a day. And then because they don't want to go home, they're depressed, they don't have friends, and they come in here and it's just like, they instantly have friends because they're sitting around a big beach table and they're coming to the mirror. So getting, having access to these kids at the high school, you can tell them that they can make a career of art. It's, I would have been crushed if someone tried to be an artist for a long time because this just wasn't a thing. So these kids that we have that are getting out of high school and we don't want them to disappear, so we want them to become the maker space the arts council and the creative and so you can be an artist and you can be creative and into the county. And this is how you can do it. So if you want to come with some of us, let us know. Well, it's been totally, totally delightful and humbling to meet you because sometimes one assumes that um Especially with such sort of the, the data is pretty dense, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Grim, you guys are so ready for this. So oh it's my God. fabulous. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea. 